Ho, ho, ho. Can you think of any other way to spend Christmas than to run away from savage abominations in a creepy abandoned facility? Well, the folks at Cowardly Creations think not. I'm Jordan from Switchwatch and I'm going to find out if Uncanny Valley is worth your Christmas cash. Before we get into it, don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more in-depth Nintendo Switch reviews. It's well worth it, I promise. You are Tom, an insignificant everyday man starting his new job as a security guard in a remote facility. Working the night shift, you can imagine things tend to be a little bit dull for our protagonist, but once he starts exploring the premises, things take a turn to the unexpected. Side characters are few and far between, and you'll find that this is a very lonely game, even right from the beginning. The story is actually a big part of this game, and also very varied throughout, mainly due to the multiple endings. This makes it incredibly difficult to talk about, but there are many things and decisions you'll make in this game that will affect the outcome of the story you will witness. There is a lot of background to the history of the facility that you're patrolling and while you're doing your rounds you can read up on staff interactions via email inboxes being open literally everywhere. It's a bit of a confusing mess considering everything is split between sent and received emails and piecing them together was fairly tiresome despite their apparent usefulness in giving a clue or two. The font did not help either, they really should have chosen a far more readable font if they wanted me to absorb what the writings had to offer, and yes, I did just complain about a font. Uncanny Valley is a game of consequence, it's a short experience but one that has many paths thanks to the decisions you choose, or maybe unknowingly choose, that can affect the outcome of your playthrough significantly, whether you interact with a certain person, visit a certain place, solve a certain puzzle, as long as you make a different decision each time you play, it's likely you will experience wildly different things. The game is cut between the real world where Tom patrols the offices of the facility and his dream sequences which occur while you're sleeping between shifts. Indeed the game begins with a dream sequence of Tom being chased by menacing shadowy entities that are seemingly impossible to outrun. The dreams all follow a similar twisted nature of Tom trying to outrun these malevolent forces. It plays out very similarly to a point and click adventure game just without the pointing and clicking. The first half of the game is very slow paced as you walk around the overly large facility, finding clues, picking stuff up. You only have a limited amount of time which to explore before your shift is over and you need to get back to your apartment, which I should mention is also explorable too and is needed to be. If you don't get back in time, you will faint, weirdly. I'm not entirely sure of the consequences of that, but it is a thing. I'm not sure I like the time restriction as there's very little room to barely explore one floor in a single night. You constantly feel rushed rather than on edge which is what I would want from a horror game. As the days pass by things start to get weirder and more ominous. If you're reading the text and listening to cassette tapes you'll quickly work out the secret going on here. Not everything is as it seems and you're sucked right into the problem. Whether it be from the power cut or perhaps finding the card keys for the basement floors, your safety will take a nosedive in the real world, not just in your dreams. The fact that the most interesting aspect of the game is the multiple endings makes this a very difficult video to do without spoiling way too much. I just want you to be wary that I'm mostly showing you the first half of the game which is also the most boring side of it for sure. Once you get to the later stages of the short game, the stakes ramp up, the action intensifies a little and it becomes far more interesting. Still, what you're seeing here is what you'll be seeing the most of. While multiple playthroughs aren't too much of a hassle thanks to the short runtime, I do feel the meandering pace of the patrol work kind of discouraged me from doing it more times than the developers probably intended. There are seemingly a lot of endings, but after seeing just two, the thought of going through the days again, seeing the same locations again, I just didn't. The limited sprint stamina really solidified that feeling too. Slowly walking the same locations just didn't appeal to me. I'm sure with how weird and winding the first two plays were, there's no doubt it would be interesting to see all of the fates of Tom, but for me I felt like I'd had enough wading through it myself and would probably resort to watching YouTube videos of the rest. I haven't, but I felt compelled to, which is not a good look considering this is what the whole game is based around. The interface is a little on the clumsy side, you have an inventory which you can access and covers the whole screen basically, but weirdly you can still move around and interact with stuff in real time in the background. You end up crossing wires, trying to do it in the inventory but end up opening a door behind you. Text often overlaps each other between menus too, maybe someone is talking to you but you use an item and the description will half cover what people are saying. It gives a distinct lack of care and polish which is weird 
considering the game is more than three years old since PC release. You would think that it would be something that could have been ironed out. Another issue I had was with the scene transitions. They are instantaneous to a fault. Things just seemingly happen. You're in one place one second and you're in a different place the next and it's difficult to work out what's going on. Indeed, I think I blinked one time and missed a very vital scene and then I'm waking up in a weird unknown place. Everything is just disjointed and far too much of a whirlwind ride for me to even keep up at times. I think the game's visuals are okay, the sprite work found in here is very common these days but it does a decent job. It reminds me very much of something like The Dark Side Detective as well as The Way, both of which I reviewed this year. From a personal perspective, I am a little tired of this visual style but that's just me. I can't say it looks bad by any means. I think it's surprisingly scary for an art form that struggles to convey such a feeling sometimes. I actually felt a little unnerved by some of the visual set pieces here, especially in the dream sequences and the later stages. One of the endings I saw made me feel positively nauseous at how gruesome they could make pixel art. I want to give a special mention to the lighting too which is well done and gives that very eerie feeling while exploring the corridors. The audio is pretty good. I was a fan of the soundtrack here. It's more modern so it doesn't match the visual style but it does a good job of adding to the unnerving situations and atmosphere of the game. It's a little subdued and there's not a whole lot of variety but that's often the case in horror games. There's a little bit of voice acting if you find cassettes laying around and that's done decently too. There's not much more to say in this regard, it's pretty simple and little else needs to be said. For value, Uncanny Valley on the American eShop has a standard price of $9.99 and in the UK £8.99, although upon release it has a very tempting 50% off. At half the price I can't give any reason not to pick it up despite its flaws, as long as you're into the genre that is. I think that's good value for money for what it has to offer and that's considering I think the standard price is fairly modest in itself. It's not getting ideas above its station like I feel a lot of games do on the Switch these days. Still, knowing the publisher is willing to delve that low so early on, it might be worth waiting out if you missed the launch sale. I'm sure it will be back down in no time at all. Before we get into my final thoughts, again don't forget to consider subscribing to our Switch related channel. We do reviews, features and many other things, you definitely won't regret it. Overall, Uncanny Valley is an interesting game. It's different, I'll give it that. And in a world where these kind of horror games are ten a penny these days, that's no mean feat. It doesn't always work though and it has its pacing issues especially in regards to encouraging you to do multiple playthroughs which the developers really want. They even mention it right at the beginning. It's a little clumsy here and there too with the interface and scene transitions making it feel much less polished than what it actually is. It's above average for sure but I'm not entirely sure it's good. A 6.5 out of 10. Up next I've put up a nice selection of recent reviews for you to peruse. One from me, one from James and one from Juan. So take your pick and I'll see you guys after Christmas. Have a good one.